Right, life is all about choices. I had the choice between going for a nice early night sleep or firing up some awful game. After blasting through a little bit of Rants 5 and Rants 6, I got inspired to play this, Swords and Serpents, for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It's bloody awful. Let's give it a whirl. We're going to be taking four people from chat and throwing in them into this first-person dungeon-crawling madness. So let's begin a new game. Let's create our own party, because the party they give you just sucks. And which buttons be again? Hopefully this button. Good. First thing you do in this game is you roll your stats, and you can roll for as long as you want and try to get the best stats possible. We got a lucky roll right there, it goes up to 14 and down to, like, 2, so if you get everything in the double digits you're in a good place. So this will be your first character, they were high in strength, so they are going to be our warrior, their warrior Rusty. Yes, Rutty. Rusty. This game has input delay like nothing on earth. Uh, it has a lot of things like nothing on earth. Right. Professional for Rusty. Warrior, they are one and only warrior. Uh, who's next up? You might have to remind me in chat because I'm very good at forgetting the things that I promise. Meanwhile, I'm just going to lightly tap B to roll and try to get something where everything is in double digits. If you can get that, you don't need to be too fussy. But, uh, leveling up is slow, arduous, painful, all those cool things in this game. Oh man, this is already bringing back memories of- oh, 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 now that's good! That is very good. Who deserves such amazing stats? Who indeed. I think we'll have one of our mages here, so we'll have Blades the Mage. That feels like a tongue twister. You're allowed up to six characters in the name, so Blades gets in there just right. So Blades the Mage, amazing stats, better keep that one in mind. And then who's up next? I think we'll have the other mage here, which is Sid, I believe. Let's hope for some strong rolls for Sid. I'll just tap and, you know, I have uh, memories of a kid of rolling three 14s and then accidentally rolling again. Well, those are alright. But they're a bit disappointing, much like Sid himself, so we'll go with that. Imagine being Sid. So there we go, there's our two mages, and we'll wrap it off with a thief. <laughs> and the thief steals the rolls in one shot. High agility as you would expect, and this is for... Brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
We'll see what we get going with that. And 16 experience points. Ah, Rusty! The game has taken pity on you and given you a shield. So we press select to go to one character and all this with staggering input delay. Uh, inventory, and then Rusty, and then Shield, and then Equip, and all that. What was that five or six menus to give Rusty that one piece of armor class? Menuing is the greatest enemy in this game. Oh, next to these old men here. Your destiny is to slay the dragon. You must uh, collect seven ruby treasures. All right, sure thing. The monsters look pretty nice for the Nez. Yeah, shame there's only about five of them, and they are just endless reskins. So we run into the bats here, two of them. I saw their little thing in the, in the top right, and it just looked like a stake to me. So we're fighting a couple of stakes. Rusty attacks, Sid attacks, and misses. Relics attacks and does not take it out in one shot. Blades gets a hit. But really, what does it matter? We just kind of mash our way through until somebody's life looks in danger, and then we try to heal them up. But these guys can do quite a bit of damage. So there we go. In and out, no messing about. Rusty got himself a broadsword, and I rather think he could put that to use, because I think he just has... Actually, I don't know what he has. That is not what I want. That's not what I want at all. And yes, you see last resort there. We can commit suicide if we really feel like it. And I'm afraid, Sid, you're already on death's door. So you might think, what is better, sword or broadsword? So we go sword, we go and examine it. Efficiency, I don't know what that means. Probably it's uh, its ability to hit. Damage class, and damage it deals, I guess. But foes hit is pretty useful. Some things attack multiple foes. And the warriors and the thieves can both use this. Cool. But the broadsword probably does more damage, right? Yeah, just as efficient, but more damage, so Rusty is going to get that DPS going on. Now what we're also going to do is try to uh, try to cast a spell, if I can eventually menu my way there. How does that work again? There we go. So let's have Blades heal up Sid with the heal spell. And if you think this is painful, well, we've only just begun. Uh, blades, while you're at it, Brelix took a bit of a noshing there. Excellent, now it's plod on. The ways of magic are scattered throughout the maze. That is correct, we will be able to find magic spells printed around and we just have to stumble upon them. The game is full of little riddles and puzzles, but for the most part it is stumbling blindly through this maze, uh, hoping that you find the right way. The whole area is predetermined, of course. I can't imagine... Were there any games in the NES that had procedural generation? I think not. So Brelix taking a, another bit of a hit. I don't think any of the enemies can kill in one hit, but they can certainly deal a lot of damage. Also, yeah, you can get encounters right after another, and it's all just about taking steps. I don't think there's actually any way to avoid them, other than... Uh, there is a possibility of retreating from battle, but the enemy gets free hits on you if you do that. That's free, with an F for Foxtrot. The soundtrack is something special, says Sid. Yeah, there's about two or three songs in the whole game, so get comfy with them. Temples are on the first, fifth, and tenth levels. Is that so? Because I have a feeling that after we murder this poor guard, always creep me out that their faces disappeared before the rest of them. Blades got themselves a halberd. I'm curious about that one actually. So let's again go one character, inventory, blades, halberd, and examine. Low efficiency, decent damage. Uh, wait, I didn't check who can use it. May I ask how you were introduced to this game, Jake? Uh, I think uh, our family had this game before I was even born, but uh, I picked up and played all the games we had. Magicians cannot use this, but a thief could. But I think a thief is better with a knife. Or a dagger, rather. I think the efficiency is more up your, uh, up your alley here. 
Yeah, that's nice and efficient. But any old bugger can use that. I'm gonna give you a halberd anyway. So we go blades. Trade this to BR. Now this is revolutionary. You can just jump between them left and right like this. So there's your halberd. Now get equipping and you should do more damage now. If I can just get away from the screen please. Pretty please. There we go. There's a temple here. And it will heal everybody up to maximum in everything. What's also going to be pretty, pretty important for us is our entire group's treasury and experience. If I remember well, those get reset when you save and quit the game. Thankfully, the magic of save states keeps us sane around here. So, that wall was something we could just walk through. Yeah, there are just walls that you can walk through in this game. The game's not going to tell you where they are or how that all works. It just happens. If I also remember young Jake's experience, there's a shop in here. Welcome to the armory. Anybody wishing to shop here should press A. Alright, sure. Well, we got some junk we want to sell, right? So we can get rid of the sword for 10 whole gold pieces. And there was a dagger that I want to get rid of for a whole 5 gold pieces. Great. What can we buy? A sword, a dagger, a broadsword, an axe, a staff, some leather, a shield, another halberd, and a plus two sword. Now you, you thought that was really special back in the day. Wow, at that much money it must be amazing. It's really not. It is really very not. Let's get the heck out of here. We need to proceed further and faster. Whew. Zarek says, good evening everybody, how much did I miss? Well, you missed the party creation, which is the only part of this game that could be considered potentially fun. So we'll just murder the spider, and kill and keep moving. Ooh, brelix has got a broadsword. That could well be good for brelix but I really don't want to menu my way through that. Also, this is painful, but let's just blast our way through them with a bit of luck. Brelix will kill one in one hit. Might be asking a bit too much from old BR there. Blades took a hell of a swing to the Fizzog, and down goes half his health. Otherwise, we did a good number on those, and for our bravery and valor, we're up to level 2. That is well worth a visit back to the, uh, to the Monks of Healing. Because uh, other than Blades' health, which has gone down, everything that we get uh, healed up by here is going to be what we've gained from that level up, so watch and watch well. Not too shabby. Not too great either, but I mean, with this kind of party. Well, let's just keep on keep it on. A couple of undeadites shouldn't be too much of a problem. I mean, we're on the first floor, nothing here is a big problem. I think Brelix just uh, one-shotted somebody. To the game's credit, the battles are lightning fast. Several men ahead are starting standing guard, so if you want to progress past this floor, and you will, you're going to have to fight these guys. Six of them. Don't be fooled by the shortened health bar. I don't think... Uh, I don't think the length of it actually corresponds to the amount of health they have. Regardless, we better take them down, so Blades, go and set fire to them. There we go. Sid, try to be a little less disappointing. What a guy. And just like that, Blades already took one to the face, and Sid got hit as well, but managed to dodge. Pretty important to keep ourselves tanked up here, so I'm going to have Blades heal thyself. Did you ever play Lands of Lore? asked Franconian. No, I did not. It sounds... bad. And if this game is reminding you of it, it's probably really bad. I'm already glad that I healed up Blades, and they are just doing a number on us. So let's have our mages take care of themselves with a good old bit of healing. Whilst Rusty and Brelix try to uh, maintain the DPS. Now if Brelix could just do his one hit kill again, that would be super swell. Or Sid just eats it again. Alright, let's have some flashy fire. Oh god, that's rubbish. There's a lot of rubbish going on here. I 
Maybe if I didn't have a halberd equipped, you know. Quit your moaning and get to killing. Jake, you just insulted one of the best old RPGs made by Westwood. The best old RPGs. I mean, I'm not the biggest RPG fan. So I don't know what you're hoping for there. But if it's really so good... One thing I do is if somebody tells me this is the best game I've played, I usually check it out. So if you're willing to tell me that it is truly great, I might just give it a go. But be careful what you wish for on that one. So Blades is on Death's Door. Blades is very much on Death's Door. That is one hit point remaining, so we'll have you heal yourself. Now, if we could just take one of these guys down, that would be super swell. We're gonna try and keep Relics alive, since Relics and Rusty are our damage dealers here. Alright, one of their uh, one of their guys is about to die. Hell, the whole bunch of them is about to die. Let's just go out all out here. All out, folks. Take no prisoners. Yeah, they are really hamming into us here. But we've taken down half of them, so they should be able to, uh, should not be able to land so many hits. Unfortunately, Blades bought it. I really thought Sid would be the first to die. But it is Blades who decided to uh, to just eat it. Not bad though, get a whole chunk of experience points. That seven gold isn't anything worth uh, being too happy about. You know, I wonder if it should be the last resort for, uh, for Sid here. <laughs> no, I don't think we can uh, just kill people one at a time. Still, death is just another part of life as Blades is about to discover. We can just drag their corpse back to the monks, and the monks will take good care of you. But if I recall well, you only get... Yeah, here we go. The temples are only on the first, fifth, and tenth levels in this 15-level dungeon. Boy, I could do with some better armor class, but let's just keep on keeping on. Ah, man, there's something so comfy about that. Let's sell the useless garbage we've got and carry on to the more exciting lands of level 2. Yeah, these halberds sell for all right money, but again, I never really figured out money being that useful. Alright, looks good. Oh wait, what the hell did I just sell? No, really, what did I just sell? Rusty shield and broadsword. I sold you leather, didn't I? Well, that's really funny. Good luck with that. <laughs> Rusty now is armor class 1. That can't be good for you. I'm trying to remember now if armor class is actually your defense or your dodge. I certainly had the um, the manual to this game, but I, won't, I haven't read it in years. I need to go to that site that actually has the old manuals scanned in. Are there any good RPGs? On the NES? asks Super Ninja Pilot. Depends what you're looking for there. Hang on, hang on. Somebody there just got a shield. But who? Also, who can use shields? Let's examine. I'll be examining this. Okay, so just warriors and thieves. Thankfully for us, Brelix is a thief. So we can trade this over to them. Get that equipped, and whilst Rusty is the glass cannon, Brelix is now the tank. The, uh, the tanky thief. 
there are definitely a lot of RPGs in the NES, the SNES is much better. SNES was pretty great for RPGs. Secret of Evermore, what a game. I haven't ran that one on stream, have I? Maybe someday. It's not a particularly long game, and it's certainly not a difficult game. But it's got a lot of soul. A lot of Jeremy soul. I would certainly love these mages of ours having some actual hit points. So at a young age, a very young age, again this game came out before I was born, I figured out an exploit on this game where... This game has a weird passwording system. If you just put in the right party passwords, you can have everybody's level set to zero. So you can level up quickly, but your individual characters, you could have their stats pretty high. So you just keep leveling up and it would keep... oh no. Alright, so welcome to ZoomTube. ZoomTube is... Uh, I don't know what we called memes back in the early 90s, but it was one of those. Also, say hello to the new kind of undead. It's Goblin City. Sadly, we do not have the Goblin Slayer with us. So Bralix is going to have to step up. Rusty is very much missing his... Um, his leather right now. I'm sure I could have bought him some, even after saying how useless money is. Oh, they are really having a go with our mages. But that's alright, we'll get them killed and we'll get a whole lot more experience for fighting here on the second floor, because these guys give a lot more than the trash mobs who are fighting at the start. Easy money for our easy life. So, finding your way around in this game is very difficult and it's not made any easier by the fact you can just have encounters at any point and they can even strike first. Let's try and keep you alive, Blades. This game will also forget the map of where you were. It will only hold, I think, two maps in memory. So it's, uh, it's there to encourage you to draw them out yourself, and as a kid I certainly filled up my fair share of notebooks with maps of this game. Those are long lost to the sands of time. No internet to help you out there. Okay, Rusty is getting covered in spiders. He only uses up one bit of spell, and we have plenty of spells, so I'm more than happy to keep people alive, because if people start dying, it's going to snowball towards death pretty badly, and I would have to drag ourselves back to uh, the monks on the starting floor. So let's try to take care of our team here. One terrible game per night, or several all night long. This is all where... Uh, ooh, there we go, level 3. That's almost worth a trip back to the monks, but it's no big deal. Uh, this isn't any kind of theme thing going on, I just wanted to play this game, and uh, as titles go, I thought it was good to be upfront and say, you're coming here to watch a terrible game, don't have any expectations otherwise. Ride zoom tubes to travel up many levels at once, not down. Down, he doesn't look too healthy, does he? Jengs, he's been on one too many zoom tube. So is this zombie. And yeah, knowing which way to go here is just not something that happens. Knowing how to keep Sid alive is also something that doesn't happen. Not happy with our health being so low. Keep it up there, Sid. Now that we're level 3, maximum life should be significantly higher at least. Watching terrible games here is pretty much my expectation at this point, says Dark Young. On what flimsy basis do you make that accusation? There is a gold lock holding door. Guess we'll have to find ourselves a gold key. We don't seem too at risk right now, so let's just balls to the wallet. If I recall the manual well... Oh, good lord, blade. Uh, keep it together there, blades. 
If I recall the manual well, the direction you hold on the D-pad when you attack is the part of the enemy that you strike. So I held up there and went for the head, which I believe was more damage but less accuracy. But that could also be a whole load of Aston chips. Rusty says the memory of Speed Racer is still fresh, probably adding to the bad games thing here. Blades, however, got themselves a helmet. I'm keen to check that out. I'm also keen to get the party healed up a bit. Oh, this game was also multiplayer. So you could play this with friends and or family. It was not a good experience. At all. We'll just have Blades tire himself out by casting magic. There we go, go. Alright, let's keep it up. No, I want to check out that helmet. <laughs> or Grimrock and its puzzles. What? Grimrock a bad game? Everybody was telling me how good it was. And it probably was good, but it just was not for me. Okay, let's investigate these helmets. Anybody can wear them and they've got armor class 2. But I'm quite keen on having Rusty not be quite so rusty, so let's trade it over to them. Trade being right next to discard, and I swear I'm going to hit that by accident at one point. There we go. Alright, let's carry on. Yeah, we got Brelix chiming in saying that, um... Saying that Grimrock is legit fun. No, I don't doubt that, it's just not necessarily fun for me. Another pallet swap, but that's alright, we'll have it down. If I recall, the requirement of experience to level up doubles each time. Up ahead, it's a... Zoom tube, and then you go... Uh... And I think this is where 90% of the people just drop the game if they'd even managed to hold on till now. Don't worry though, Jake, the good games definitely outweigh the bad ones that are played. I'm not so sure about that. I have uh, noted down all the punishment games, all 115-ish of them that have been on this channel, and I think that might weigh quite a bit of credence to there being a significant amount of bad games here. That's fine though. Bad games really highlight the good games. Alright, well just as well we're back we can ditch some of the garbage that we've picked up. Hopefully don't sell somebody's uh, leather or other such again. Jinx, you're stealing it all. Uh, halberd and sword, away they go. Just like that. Okay, there's not really much need for us to explore more around floor one just yet. There was a hint on the ground earlier that said, for victory you must pass through walls. Uh, in this game there is a magic spell called Pass Wall. It allows you to go through the wall in front of you. Sometimes. Why is Blaze so much better at casting spells than Acid? Than, uh, than Sid. Acid? Uh, oh, that's right, Sid had crummy rolls. So that pass wall is exhausting, right? You end up rubbing your face against all the walls in the game and uh, laboriously casting the spell to get somewhere new. And it's not, not like you even know which way to go, right? It doesn't show you anywhere on the map if there are stairs there or not. But maybe that's my fault, right? I'm meant to be drawing out my own maps. This game is almost as good as Encarta Castle Explorer. That must be such a good game. So 
Uh, just like that, I explored this heap of nothing here. But given that there are useful spells and stuff scattered around, you're almost obligated to go and check everywhere. That was Brelix getting a one-hit kill on the upper goblin. Good job. I always figured that um, warriors are useless and thieves are the best because thieves kill in one hit. But it's rare, so I guess there's that. You are hard blocked from beating the game if you don't bring a mage with you, at least one, if I recall well, because only a mage can cast Passwall crumbs. Well, that took me somewhere insignificant. I just hope I don't step in another zoom tube. Very keen on keeping our people alive, so let's make sure Blades still has health. Rusty has the helmet, so I'm sure they can survive a hit or two. Brelix actually tanked that hit, a direct hit, and it didn't do any damage. That's that shield of theirs. Meanwhile, Rusty is, well, acting a bit rusty. I'll just block everything with my head, he says. Permanent cranium damage for Rusty on Twitch. But if we don't kill people, we don't get experience. That was a decent amount of experience just for killing some useless guardsmen. We're getting a feel for the border on this map at least, so we can go forward with relative impunity there. Brelix is getting a touch damage, so let's top you up. Shame about the mages, they don't really do a lot of damage in the attacking phase, so perhaps it would be better to bring two thieves and one mage, but if you start running low on magic, and you can really start running low on magic, you feel the burn of having only one mage. And if one mage dies, it's good to have a backup mage, like when the blades died earlier. Good grief, lads, come on. There we go. Still being drowned in crap, though. I'm looking forward to getting to level 3, wherever it is, as long as we don't accidentally step on the accursed zoom tube. Why do you need at least one mage to beat the game, asks Balance Maker. Whoa, nice shot, Brelix. You just scored an instant kill on the middle undead there. So, mages are the only ones that can cast Pass Wall, which allows you to move through walls, and if I remember the game well, it is imperative that you are able to pass through the walls at some point. It's certainly useful, but uh, I believe for actually beating the game, it is even more imperative than keeping Greg alive in Dead Rising 1. Please give me a better weapon, says Brelix. Nope, it's Halberd for you for now. Try not to zoom tube now. I can't even remember where that teleporter was. It was at the end of a tunnel, right? Easy kill, just not a lot of EXP for it. And if we check how the party is doing, our experience level is 340. Hmm. Don't know what level we need to progress more. Right into the battle, and Sid takes a hit. Rusty does not block with his head. And like magic, there's the Greg clip in chat. What a moment, right? I, I was very close to just uh, resetting there and then, 
but I knew my nearest save was very long ago. Oh, hey Aristo, 44 minutes. Was this where we teleported? I hope not. No, no, obviously not, otherwise we would not progress here. Let's keep on keeping on. Uh-oh. Sid's getting nibbled by bats here, so save yourself. better weapons to deal some actual damage here. I'd like the mages to be able to actually deal damage on their attack phases. Ah, but we all just hit level 4. That's uh, a happy experience for us. I won't even be too sad if we zoom tube our way up to level 1 now, because then I can hit up the, um, the monks for some swell healing. For now, though, Let's get everybody up to those chunky life point levels. And I just got scale. I believe Brelix picked it up. And I know it goes against your creed, but I'm going to have to ask you to hand that over to Rusty, because scale is a better version of leather. And I could do with Rusty not dying right about now. I wonder if you'll have enough health to get to my favorite looking health bar. I'm going to give you another heal. Healing is uh, not laborious at all. Okay. Now let's head up Brelix with our inventory. <laughs> it's fine. Scrawny Rusty needs his armor. Alright, so scale, if we go and check it out with the examine and not discard. Also, Red Wharf King and Harkler. Cheers. Armor class 4. Pretty good, not applicable for magicians. Not pretty good, but this should make Rusty fairly indestructible. So let's trade it over to them. Rusty's got a lot of stuff going on, but we'll have you equip this. And just like that, Rusty has enormous armor class. They should be pretty untouchable now. Should be, I mean... Uh, I, I think Rusty will take that as a challenge to unimpress us. Now here we go, four goblins. And they're straight away mincing into our mages here. Come on, jump in front of their daggers there, Rusty. Save blades, save Sid. Relics is just hiding in the shadows, using a halberd as a dagger. Okay, Jinx. That's why I'm so uncertain about armor class. I really think it might just be a dodge rather than... Uh, rather than actual armor. Because Rusty really felt that one. Still, we're making good work on these goblins. Slaying them, if you will. I'm a bit uncomfortable with the health level here, so let's get rusty. A bit of spit and polish. Yeah, it's more like it, rusty. Tank it with your head. Oh, Sid tanked it with his head. And also, Blades is on his way out. Thankfully, one of their goblarinas are dead, so let's have Blades heal themselves. If it's D&D based, which it probably is, then AC would be chance to not get hit. That's what I'm thinking, but I'm not big on my D&D. There we go. Pillaged the remaining one, and we feel all the better for it. Sid does not look so hot, so let's have Sid heal thyself. Oh, we made it! Onwards and downwards, welcome to level 3. If we can miraculously get our way to level 5, then there'll be a temple which can heal us up. 
Sadly though, I think we'll have to get ourselves back to level 1 and have health and magic restored, unless we're fortunate enough to stumble across a magician's fountain, which restores all spam relics does not look so hot. Well, who would have thought this new level, they're punching a bit harder. However, the experience we're getting is punching a bit harder too. I really like the fact that the menu uh, thing at the top changes colour as well based on where we are. Okay, now there are evil wizards here, and I thought these guys looked really cool. Look at those effects! Not what you'd expect on the NES. And I'd figured that when they do their attack animation, it's when you get hit. But as you can see, we're doing nothing here, and they are not hurting us either. So You're beating up a homeless guy. No homeless guy would have a beard that awesome looking. Okay, so they must have a lot of overshield because we're not putting a dent in them. But they can hit multiple targets at a time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, well, let's lay the smack down. Brelix, if you could kill them in one hit, that would be swell. It's a bad day to be Sid. A weekday, if you will. Let's keep them tanked up, and if we get Sid to tank up Brelix, then we should be alright going forward. Yeah, I would love to get a recharge on the spells. Alright, one down, and then the last one falls no problem. A hundred experience for that. So here we are in Threshold, whatever that means. And the goblins are meaner and bluer. Welcome to Aoni. Nothing to it. Drowning in the experience and killing all comers. Any passive mana gen in this? No, there is not. This is quite dangerous. To the point where sometimes the better part of Valor is something, something. We're going to run away from this a bit. Hopefully nobody dies. Off we trot. Apparently we're cowards for doing so, but that stopped us from being mincemeated. You know, back in the time when the game would slag you off for being a coward or a wimp or whatever. Good times. But sometimes when you come across a foe that you... Oh, good lord. Locked doors have remote triggers. Thank you, Red Man. Maybe this is Red Aramir. Yeah, sometimes you come across a foe and you realize it is not worth the everything to fight them. So we've got four doors. I'm not actually sure which is the best way to go. Ah, right, now I remember. It's, uh... Yeah. It says ouch, but it doesn't actually hurt your health to fail that. Yes, there, there are triggers here and we need to find them. That's probably the one that's furthest away. Yep, I'm thinking. Farewell, homeless men. Let Rusty tank that. We can deal with goblins. Oh man, Brelix can deal with goblins. It's just so good when the thief takes out an enemy in one shot. Nice. Shame we're running horrifically low on... Uh, on magic. To avoid the traps to the northeast, stay near the walls. Let's keep that in mind when we go northeast. Here comes one of those zoom tubes. So you're busy making progress in the game, and then you just stumble across one of these, and it's hey, back you go, do it all again. 
And the game has forgotten the map of floor one because we progressed by two floors. Fortunately, the enemies here are laughably weak compared to us, but I also have no idea where we are and what we're doing now. I think I have a relative idea. I want to go this way. If only I had drawn out the maps of these places, I'd have no problem figuring it all out. Still, this was all part of my calculated plans to... This is not what I'm looking for. Yeah, we need to hit up the temple anyway, which is why I kinda knew we were waltzing our way towards uh, certain zoom tubing there. So I feel a great amount of satisfaction from this part. Ah, oh, man. Just look at all that. Those big chunky bars of uh, life and spell. Feels pretty good. In fact, can I get some numbers on those? One character... Attributes. The health ain't too great, but those spell points are. Mm. God, look at the difference here. Just blades is superior to Sid in every conceivable way, and it looks like intelligence directly maps to spell points. I'm not sure if we can say that something directly maps to health though. Sixteen and sixteen, eleven and twelve. Hmm, maybe not. No, maybe that's just mapped to uh, whatever class you are. Well, whatever the case, we're tanked up on everything, so let's head back to... First Floor 2. Which it won't remember, probably. Oh, of course it doesn't. Well, thankfully we remember which way to go is what I would say if I had anything resembling a short-term memory, but I do not. It's a real problem of mine, and I'm not at all working to fix it. August 1990, huh. Then it is still older than me, but only barely. And Relic's just one shot at the bottom one. Good job, Relic's. You're the one holding up this group. Although Blades and Sids are the one holding it together. Um, Rusty, please. We didn't invest armor class 7 in you for this. It's good to be useful at something, says Brelix, feeling a entirely new emotion surging through him. I do not know how turn order works in this game. That was that enemy getting multiple shots on us. The enemies are so much more manageable when you just have to deal with one of them. It's totally better that way as well, because when you fight multiple of them, let's say we fought three bats, we would get three times the experience, but it would be a lot more than three times the threat. said to keep it together. Oh no, if mages were not an absolute necessity, I would have a party of four thieves. Imagine having four times the one-hit kills that we've seen from Brelix. It would be beautiful. More health than those crummy mages as well. Sadly, the thieves can't steal things in this game. Is that a door to somewhere? Door to where, though? Consumables in the game? I don't believe so. We can pick up items, but... Oops. Come to think of it, I picked up some items earlier and didn't sell them, and it probably would have been a good idea to free up that space. 
because the person who gets the killing blow can sometimes get an item. The healing in this game really is fun with a capital F. Okay, what do we have here? There's a... Um, I believe there's a spell at the end of this maze of doors. There's also the green mugger there, but he's dealt with. Slight nibble for the blades. You'll notice I'm not using flash fire anymore, I just used it to show it off. I'm not convinced that offensive magic is any use in this game. At least not the early spells. himself a sword, but he still has to use his halberd for killing efficiently. It'll be great when I get Thief's Knife. I don't know if that's what it's called, but there is a special kind of knife that attacks multiple targets. I think it has high efficiency as well, so Brelic should be able to slaughter more indiscriminately with it. There we go! We've found a plus one sword! And fittingly, Blades is holding it. Let's have a look at that, Blades. What you got? Okay, so it's armor class one. Efficiency and damage is good, so I think we're gonna give this to Brelix. Just drop that sword, it's useless to us. Oh, so it does ask if you're sure. Cool. That's gonna be useful. Dude had to step up and become a swole mage. A mage's life is to provide replenishment for his group. Don't ask me how much time I had to create water for my raid in World of Warcraft. Yeesh. I thought there was a spell here, but if this means we keep relics alive a little longer, then I can't complain too bitterly. Still think there might be a spell around here, though. Look at all these doors we still have. Rusty says, Mage seems like they're always the most interesting choice. Maybe so, but I like to keep things simple. If there's a character I can play as who's just a big meaty individual who throws fists or other things, then that's all the better. Relics gets a staff, however, Blades and Sid already have staffs, so that seems a bit of a waste of time. <laughs> Nicely done, Brelix. There we go, the words to a shield spell are written here. So if we go to Blades and say, please cast shield, just like that, everybody's armor class has increased by one. I don't know how long it lasts. But it only costs one spell point, and it seems like something that we should always have uh, active. What's it like having eight armor class, Rusty? 
with your incredibly heavy armor, now you can dodge everything. Oof, Sid wasn't able to dodge that though, let's help you out there. Feels better than being naked, <laughs> jinx. I think Sid would do better off being naked, why are you just so... disappointing? You're like the Yamcha of the party. That YouTube commenter, or yeah, I think it was YouTube Scrub who used complacement, noticed that we were mocking him for saying complacement. May the mockery continue and live long. And there we go, experience level 5. That is well worth a trip back to the Mad Monks once we finish off with this, because then we get something that I like a lot, potentially. Okay, right. Now we can be satisfied there's nothing else to worry about behind these doors. Tank it, Sid. Tank it, Blades. So that didn't take long. Our shield has already run out. But that doesn't stop Sid trying to be useful in casting it again. Glorious relics, just glorious. It's not too much for us to head back for a quick bit of healing. Especially since we did all that exploration there. Where's that zoom tube? That would get us back a bit faster. Uh, I don't know, but I don't trust it. Let's take the way we actually know. And again, Brillix, just imagine if we had four thieves doing that for us. We would be unstoppable. We wouldn't even have to think we're at the objective. I'm gonna show this to my mother, she'll be so proud, says Brillix. That is sweet, but also... This game glitched out a lot on the NES, visually, that is. I mean, the game is already a bit scary with the visuals, just imagine it having uh, graphical distortion all over the screen, and the enemies just being uh, clumps of glitched, uh, glitched graphic. That was some frightening stuff for a small child. Goblin missing? No, pretty much. Alright, do we get it? Ah, so close, but not quite there. I think on the next level up, we're going to start having our spells be over 20 in uh, quantity. And that's pretty nice. It looks nice to me. Health being above that would be good too, but that might be asking a tad too much. Sid get some leather. Shame that's no good for you. Alright, experience reset, but experience levels at 5. I forget how much we need to level up, but it really doesn't matter. I'm not going to be grinding for it. I'll just kill everything we come across. Unless it's scary, then I kind of back off a bit. Hey Jake, what do you do when you're sad? Well, I'm not often sad. What do I do? I just carry on with stuff until I'm not sad. So we sold off a jewel for 25 bits, because I don't think jewels are actually used for anything. This halberd's got to go. It's just wasting space. Level 6 is 1600, says Dark Young. Thank you. Good to see you're reading up about this game that we all collectively care about so much. 
speed races is what makes all of us sad. It certainly does. But even if I was tremendously sad playing it, I just powered on through, and now I'm not sad. I'm not sure I could ever be as sad as that game made me. Alright, thank you, Armory. I said thank you, Armory. Let's get out of here. Make our way back to level 3 and blitz through it. We have the health, we have the magic, we have the armor class. We should be just fine. My solutions don't work for everybody, real. But they tend to work for me. I do like the way the colors change as we go along. It's going to become quite uh, flamboyantly pink if we get far enough. Full on Ginyu Force. Whiskey reviews are the cure for sadness. Uh, yeah, I do enjoy the whiskey reviews. Clearly not enough, because I haven't done one all year. I should go and fix that. I'm going to head over to Podcat's place soon. He's got an open fireplace, so I'll do a proper one in front of a roaring fire. He demands that I do it in exchange for some whiskey, and that's a pretty done deal for me. You didn't do Terranigma all year either. Yeah, I'm going to drop doing that every year. I think I've done it plenty enough. Poems about Ottomans are the best depression medication I've ever had, says Sid. Well, I like the take on that. It's like uh, one Scotsman unable to defeat the Ottomans turns to poetry to have his fantasies lived out. Yeah, just be gone. That shield does not last long, does it? But, I think it's pretty important in keeping us alive, so let's keep it there. Oop. Diddled. Quite confident we have to go in this general direction to get out of this floor. As long as we don't fall for the old zoom tube. Okay, if Sid could stop jumping in front of the angry spiders. Can't drop Terranigma, it's a channel tradition. That's been my tradition. But no, I rather think I. Okay. Could we please. This is like Draken. Just get a, an encounter one frame after the previous one. healthy there. It's not that you're in a bad position, but I would be prudent to keep everybody healed up. It also means that if I run into the Magician's Fountain, wherever it is, I'm sure it's somewhere, then we get all that spell back. Beware hidden teleporters. I'll keep that in mind, friend. I think we stumbled across one here earlier, but I certainly cannot remember where that was. Good Lord, Sid. Strong. I think it pays for itself because if we dodge enough attacks with a shield, it means we don't have to spend as much, if not more, spell on healing. I did host a Terranigma uh, race once, and that was really enjoyable. Myself and Yagamoth himself were doing that. This is not the exit. Where is that exit? Do 
Jake sighing my name exasperatedly makes some part of me really happy, and it kind of scares me, says Sid. Is it your life's ambition to be this kind of a deadweight? You should have joined in the killing floor run we had. And the, the grudge I will bear against Spam and Dark Young will be something else forevermore. Right, I'd assumed this was the way out of here, but it looks like I assumed wrong. Let's keep those mages alive. Rusty I'm a bit satisfied with, but... Sid and Blades need to be kept alive. Very alive. Good grief. And this is with shield. <laughs> oh my god, there's just so many encounters in this game. I've forgotten how rife they were. I pulled my weight first time, and I survived wave 7 on hardest difficulty. That's got to count for something. Hang on, no, I, I said Dark Young, but I didn't mean you. I meant Death Shed. Oh god, Death Shed. Death Shed was a pure tax on the team. steps down. I wonder if it's that little bit that I didn't explore in that little hook. I hope not. Hey, Kaiser grew into a real survivor. I have a middling amount of respect for the man after all that. No, where the heck is the way out of all this? James Blade, you really tanked that one with your face, as did Rusty. I think Sid is just pushing his uh, compatriots into the danger, hoping they don't get knocked down and notice themselves. However, Brelix, ever the graceful thief, just picked up an item that interests me greatly. I'm going to have you first trade this longsword over to Rusty. I don't know why I even came to watch this, says Plo. Me neither. Alright, the axe is not particularly useful, but this long sword, if we give it a quick examination. Huge efficiency, decent damage class. I'll take it. At least I think that's better than the broadsword. 15 8 versus 10 6. Phenomenally better, so we'll have you equip the longsword. So Rusty should be able to hit a bit harder. And I'm going to drop the axe because it's just wasting space. And finally, a little bit of healing whilst we're not in battle. Could I come out of this, please? There we go. Blades has been the one chewing through all the healing. So we'll have Sid use their magic for a bit. That should be fine, but I would also like some shielding, please. Oh no. Am I finally not going to use a damn halberd? You're not using a damn halberd, you're using a plus one sword. That's why you have armor class 5 right now. I still don't think sword is particularly good for a thief to be using, but when I get you a good dagger, I will have you use that good dagger. Let's 
See, it's that kind of armor class that's letting you tank those hits. And letting Sid not tank those hits. You sorry mages. I am left wondering if maybe two mages is uh, detrimental. At least thieves can put a bit of smack down on the foes. Jake, you forgot to put Draken's graphical settings to Ultra. Didn't I just? We're still on level 2 here, right? Uh, let's, let's go and get tanked back up on the top floor. And then hopefully have a better stab at finding the exit that I've forgotten the way to. If we can get ourselves to level 5, everything's Gucci, because there's a temple there. And the mobs will be harder, but at least give a lot more experience. Now, how about that experience? Now, yeah, we're almost halfway towards the next level. I don't see the plus one sword equals five AC logical path, says Sid. It's plus one sword because it gives plus one armor class. Which means the plus two sword gives plus two armor class. But we're not going down that route. I'm spending 750 gold on something we're probably going to throw away pretty quickly. That's a good amount of spells to get back. But not good enough. Sid, get us some shielding. Much better. <laughs> nice kill, Brelix. Very nice kill. Show the folks back home that. A tiny scratch? Not on my watch. Please, game. Drowning in the items, though, and, uh... Now, welcome, Dr. Marsange. Quality of this game is highly debatable. Uh, shield is only usable by the... Uh, the warrior and the thief, right? So I can just chuck that out. I need to be able to buy scale to keep my magicians alive. Tempted not to sell the shield just in case it can be equipped by the mages. I need to double check that. We got a thousand gold, that's pretty amazing. If only there was anything here worth buying, but there is not. menuing again. Oh, I am never playing Virtual Bart again, Sid. Never ever. That game is so bad. Like, it, it, it's just depressing to play. Okay, there we go. Magician cannot equip shield. Good to know. Yeah, the closest we're going to play is Port Royale 4 and play with our Virtual Barks there. It's as good as I'll do you. Alright, can we please progress in this game? And then these zombies come along and say, no, no you may not. Oh, let's just slaughter them. Goodbye armor class. Goodbye rusty health.
I feel the game's really cranked up the encounter rate for reasons unknown. But Brelix is dealing enough damage that I can't even tell if that was a one-shot or him just being really swole. How much longer will this terror be streamed, asks Viddy the Otter, and Zarek already has the answer, as long as Jake is in the mood. I think we've got a good bit of this still in us. Eventually, surely, we'll be able to hit floor five. But we needed that, uh, we needed that magic back, and that was a one-shot from Brelix again. How does he do it? Poor Rusty, he's also helping. He just doesn't really show it though, that's the problem. I mean, yeah, maybe he's helping, but... If it's not so visible, what's even the point? Are those guns in the UI in the corners above the map and first person with... No, no they are not. They are the little lippy parts of the pillars. No guns in this game. Not so sure they'd be useful against foes like Undead and Spider. Up ahead it's a zoom tube so we're just gonna back away. Unfortunately, these pink cloth zombies are not terribly threatening as they rip off a considerable chunk of Blade's life and Sid buys it too. I'm significantly disappointed by the two of you. But at least Rusty isn't Blade's and at least Blade's isn't Sid. So we can have that going forward. Abrelix doesn't have a gun, he's got a cannon. Okay, this feels a touch more familiar. Yeah, there was a lock. And then I ignored the lock. Oh god, no, this isn't it at all. Where the heck was the way out of all this? I recall it just being southwest. It's a bit of sizable pain on your blades, keep it together. Uh, that was not blades, that was not blades at all. Yep, not falling for that one. Dang, how do we get out of here? Now this space, uh, at this rate, there'll be plenty of need for healing and more spell bar regaining, which is not what I'm here for. Still, let's keep everybody topped up. That's everybody enough. Something silly like over here, is it? No. Oh, 
Are there bosses in the game, Jake? Can I one-shot them too? There are bosses in this game. I forget how one-shottable they are. Do you think this game would generously lower the encounter rate in areas we've explored already? But you would also think wrong. There is one big bad boss, and that is the serpent at the very bottom of the game. I have never encountered the serpent before because it requires you getting to floor 15, and even getting to floor 10 is hell on earth. It. This feels like it. Alright, it's not a zoom tube, it's the stairway down to three. Alright. I forget, what blasted us out of here? Did we find a zoom tube? Yeah, that was exactly what happened. And now I don't have the map here, but we were told to cling to walls to avoid uh, traps in northwest. We should all try to avoid traps. Ooh, this is a scary enemy. It continues to be a scary enemy. Spooky skeleton. And I'm not even able to land hits on them. And they're landing multiple scary hits on us. Blades, keep yourself afloat. Which means we are whiffing hits left and right on these. Yeah, very much keep yourself alive, please. Because our armor class, I'll have that back again, please. Ah, welcome TTC. Just in time for Brelix to flex on us all. Sid is remarkably avoiding disappointment here. In fact, they even scored the final shot there. Not too bad. Chewed through a lot of health though, and by extension a lot of man uh, magic. Feet. Now let's find that switch. There. Oh my days, Brelix one-shotting one of the guards from everything to nothing. Seldom have I been so impressed. And there we go, that was the trigger. The door is unlocked. So we can carry on. Through which door exactly, I don't know, but I'm sure we'll find out. After we slay this goblin. With his spring-loaded knife. The enemy needs to death road to Canada signature flashing spooky description. I like that reference. I hear they have been updating Death Road to Canada, but I fired it up and didn't notice anything changed enough to make me want to play it. The thing was we defeated the hardest thing that game has to offer took a lot of attempts, but we made it, so I don't really feel a great urge to go back to it. Also, I really like having that extra armor class, so let's keep spending. And let's hug those walls to avoid the traps. Oh, well that was easy. Hmm. 
Seems that even the bats are getting swoller down here. Says a man who's been coming back to Frostpunk like clockwork. Listen, the only reason I come back to Frostpunk is because we have some cool new challenges for it. I haven't had any cool new challenges for Death Road to Canada. That said, even if I got them, I would probably just roll my eyes and go, yeah, no thanks. I could imagine somebody saying, do a Kappa only run, and I just go, oh. As it stands, though, I have <clears throat> no challenges that really excite me for Frostpunk right now. So we're not going back into that. Not until we have a good one, that is. <clears throat> On the plus side, they're putting out more content for it, so it won't be long until I come crawling right back. I think we'll take the fight to the homeless man here. However, I require shield, and I want blades healed up a bit. This would be a great opportunity for Brelix to one-shot one of the old homeless men. But instead of delivering the kill, Brelix just delivers disappointment. I forget, did you do a Carlish run for Death Road to Canada? I feel like I tried that, but it's been quite a while, so forgive me if I can't even remember. Chinks, these guys are laying the smack down on us. Let's try and keep Brelix alive here. And then Blades can heal themselves. Yeah, I feel like there was a death walk to Canada, but my memory's not to be trusted. Jinx, this is why I want to avoid the fight with the old homeless man. They give good experience. Good enough to level us up, apparently. But dang, if they don't hit hard. Let's do some healing across the party here. I'm gonna hold out and hope that we run into a magician's um, fountain because that should restore all of our spell. I want to check our attributes on that. Yeah, Rusty! And Brelix should both be healed again. Then we get something that satisfied me very much as a child. Sid... Uh, no, that was, that was the wrong thing to do. Sid heals Rusty. Look at that. Childhood Jake went, wow. Felt like my party was invincible. Oh man, Blades took a hit and didn't even flinch. Meanwhile, Rusty just can't be hurt. We're unstoppable. Unless your name is Sid, then you're very stoppable. I feel like there's a hidden passageway here. Ah, good evening's work. So there we go, you hit Brelix and he goes, Haha, look at this massive health I had behind my other massive health. It just feels good. And if it feels good, it can't be wrong. Oh, I wonder if that felt good for Blades. Probably not. Let's get you fixed up. And continue to lay the smack down. I'd love to get Blades and Sid some better weapons so they could actually deal respectable damage. Time. 
Uh, hang on, these ones did a lot of hurt on me before. Let's do the clever thing and just take a step back. Yes, yes, cowards. Don't give respectable weapons to people who can't be respected, says TTC. Blades and Sid have kept us alive here. I think they've earned at least something resembling respect. I'm not really respecting their maximum magic points, though. I felt like these walls could be walked through. I still don't understand. Why is armor class your ability to dodge? You know, scale mail is heavier than leather. I would imagine far less mobile, and yet... And yet... No, okay. I thought maybe I could walk through some walls there. If I had pass wall, I could pass wall through it, but it would come at a cost of magic. Oh ho! We got something good there! Rusty, tell me more. Now, who will be the first to claim this one? Blades or Sid? Who wants what we just picked up? Because what we got was Wizard Wand. Let's have a look at it. Efficiency 14, damage 4, but it hits up to two enemies and gives armor class. Let's compare that to a regular staff. Which has 11 efficiency, same damage class, but only hits one foe and gives no armor. Blades has more muscle. He deserves it, says Sid. Staggering. But I agree. So let's... Trade it to the blade it. And just like that, blades has become super swole, and they're just going to snap their old twig in half. A game is only as good as its UI. Um doesn't speak well for Paradox games. Alright, the old homeless man has departed from his gaggle, and for that, relics killed him in one shot. I'm finding myself growing more infatuated with relics by the day. So we went through a secret door to find this, and somewhere a door has unlocked. I thought maybe I could just keep going forward and blast through that, but no, we got to retrace all these steps. Well then, Jake, reintroduce sliders, you don't say. Brelix again, he finds his target, he kills his target. Sid, I feel a bit dangerously under-defended here. Could I please have some, uh... Wow, Sid can't even get a turn here. Come on. There we go. Okay, we only have two magic points between our two wizards now. So we should probably focus on staying alive. Probably. I'm still holding my breath that we're able to find a magician's fountain up in the northeast. And that's not going to do us any good if our magicians aren't alive, so we'll have them heal up for now. And that's it, no more spell. We gotta be cautious here, and that does mean I'll have to back away from a fight if it looks too spooky. <laughs> this guy doesn't look spooky though. Well, I get him. Is this a. Uh... No, can't go through that. I imagine I'll have to come back here with pass wall later on to be going through all these walls. 
Did I see a door? Other than that one, of course. Alright, they're still just uh, blue goblins, so they can't be that scary, he says, as his mages get murdered. The monk says, throwing dosh at Jake because I have nothing better to do with my life, having subscribed for 39 months, which is kind of terrifying, but I do appreciate it. I just have difficulty expressing it. Bad. It's not like there's potions or anything we can consume to get our health and stuff back. Oh, Christ. Well, this is where I can't walk. I have to stick to the walls here to avoid uh, pain and death. Everyone just took a chunk of damage there, which is not ideal. There we go. Magic fountain. Now we're at the objective. Alright, with that, let's get some swell healing for the whole crew. Quite the MP disparity. Well, I mean, the only difference between the two of them are the stats that they rolled at the very start. Sid can't help rolling mediocrity. Relics just rolled some good ones right off the bat, which was awesome. We had to grind out Rusty and Blades a bit, but that's part and parcel of it all. Yeah, let's get Relics right up there. Sweet, welcome to level four. Let's hope we don't wipe here, because then it's right the way back to one. <sighs> Not that I know which way to go. Welcome to Secret Square. I do not know how that works, but it feels like somewhere that I need some extra shield. I wish I could be so reliable in real life too, but a man can dream, says Brelly. Do they say secret square or magic square? Probably secret square. I don't know what its secret is. I don't understand these games. Why even have tank classes if you can't defend your weaker character, says El Coro. Bring it up with the makers of the game. What? What is it? It's uh, Info Games and the guys that did Lost Vikings, which might even be those guys. Oh, and Acclaim. Okay, so now we have to deal with serpents. The game is called Swords and Serpents after all. I have a feeling that these ones are going to mince us a bit, but let's take them on anyway. Let's get complacent with this huge amount of mana that we have. Come on, Brelix, put your back into it. Oh, well, you did. Thanks for the experience. Let's just keep our mages alive. As we try to figure out the secret of these squares. Seems that the real threat to the party are ghosts that are hard to hit. Everything else dies reliably. Yeah, I mean, we got a pretty sweet party here. Rusty tanks shots at his face. Blades and Sids keep... Wait, what? A lock clatters. Tumblers are reset. That sounds not good. Perhaps that is the secret of the square. So keen on keeping these fights going without our shield up. So, Sid, make yourself useful. And, um, well, that didn't help relics. I 
sure this is anti helping us there, going on some kind of goblin rampage. That's the stuff. It's a shame that healing is something you have to do so often in the game, and yet the menuing for it ain't ideal. But if we can just make our way through floor 4 here, floor 5 and their mad monks are there for us. A cleverer man would have grabbed the maps of this game earlier. These ones always get the fast shots on us. Look at them. They are speedy. Finally, a full playthrough of Swords and Serpents, says Lucky. Lucky ran this game himself a few years ago. I don't think he saved the videos. But that's fine, because I did. Like a good friend. So I got those to laugh at every now and then. Brelix, however, just picked up something, and I don't think he wants to give it to anybody else, because it is Chain. Let's have a look at it. I have not played Slay the Spire. Deck building, deck building, roguelike. Doesn't sound like fun to me. First off, you've got an axe, so let's just chuck that. Secondly, let's have a look at that chain, because you currently wear leather. But chain, if we take a look. Cannot be equipped by magicians, clearly too heavy for them. But a certain swole thief could certainly wear it for five armor class. So please do equip it. And there we go. BR and Rusty are now super tanks. The difference is, though, Brelix is the one that kills in one hit. Whereas Rusty just has to flail about with his... Ooh, I can walk through these walls. This is a slick zombie. We can't lay a finger on it. Uh-oh. Oh, dear lord, Sid, you bought it. Well, now we have to drag Sid's uh, nasty corpse around with us on our hunt to find level 5. And things just got considerably more dangerous. So let's make sure the live bars are topped up here. Maybe not Umbrellix would be a bit of a waste when he has that much already. Hmm. Something just reset. More giant alien spiders. Fortunately, though, Brelix can handle it. Just step on the man. I don't really like. Uh, casting shield now has a diminished return because it's not like it helps. You've come this far, are you sure? That sounds like zoom tube to me. Ain't no way. No, 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 no. Imagine zoom tubing your way back up when you're this close to finding level 5. The words to a death mist spell are written here, which could be useful, but also could not. No, I do not want to zoom tube my way out of here, thanks. Oh, Brelix, excellent attack. Not that we'd expect anything less from the resident Brazilian. They're known as the Mark II Portuguese, better in every conceivable way. <laughs> There's a lot to conceive. Right, come on, this is still Magic Square Land. Where the heck do we go? Oh god, that one hit kill from the BR man. And again, he killed both of them in the patented one shot technique. I really wonder why you have anything other than thieves in this game. Alright, Blades, keep yourself alive. And while we're at it, keep Rusty alive. Um, Brelix is looking okay on health.
Yeah, no, I'm thinking just no to this. Some locked doors must be opened. Thank you, Red. Use zoom tubes to return to safety. Nonsense. The only safety I want is in uh, floor five. Oh, good grief, Blades. Mind you, Blades just managed to find red staff. Once you heal yourself up, I'm going to look into that. Would be something potentially good to give to Sid, but I'm afraid Sid is busy being dead. So we know you got the wizard wand, that was pretty good. Let's ditch this dagger, it's not worth anybody's time, and it's only worth five gold anyway. Now that red staff... Hits once, armor class two, great efficiency and good damage, but I'd rather have something that can hit twice than that. Still, it's an excellent weapon to give to Sid, if only he were alive enough to make use of it. Ooh, strength spell written here. If only I had another mage. Another alive mage. Hmm? Somewhere, a lock tumbler clicks as it falls into place. Where did we have a locked door? Must have been somewhere. Nothing like being dead to make you feel missed. The four locks must be opened in the mark of a Z. Ooh, that sounds like a puzzle almost. Welcome to Secret Square. There was a tumbler thing that happened here, right? There we go. Now I need to hit the one on the bottom left. We just need to survive our way to it. Keep yourself living there, Blades. Expertly done as usual, Relics. Now, I don't remember finding anything resembling a little. I know they're just spiders and all, but let's skedaddle. Trust this. Yeah, we want to go there, I'm sure, eventually, but for now, let's just find the lock. I'm not interested in taking anything that's too meaty and too many numbers. This guy's solo, so there's only so much damage he can do. <laughs> Couldn't even hurt blades. Death dagger? Is that so? Well, first let's have you heal up old Rusty. And then let's check out this death dagger. Blades is the one grabbing all the cool weapons. Let's have a look. Efficiency 21, damage class 12. Brelix, how are you feeling about that? I think it's time for you to ditch your leather and get yourself a death dagger. Also, it could be high time that. Rusty 
ditched the old long sword and got a better sword. But first, the death dagger over the relics. So your armor class stays the same, but you're far more efficient. And now Rusty should get more armor class out of this, because plus one sword beats long sword, right? Probably. We can double check the numbers on that. Fourteen eight. On the plus one. Fifteen eight. So we're trading one efficiency for one armor class. And I'm happy to make that trade. Let's just throw an axe on the ground. Alright, it's coming along fine. We have lost Sid. But I'm sure we'll survive. We just need to find that... Uh, Where is that switch? Mm. I don't really want to take this fight, but we will. Nice death daggering there, Brelix. does. He really does. Where the heck is that? Uh... Where the heck is that switch? Don't get too cocky there, Brelix. Be sure to hold the death dagger on the right side. Rusty finds a great sword. What's so great about it? Remember, we've got 14-4 with one armor class. So how great is this? It's a lot stronger. A whole lot stronger. Eat that armor class loss in order to do more damage. And I'm probably just going to chuck the long sword on the ground because it's taking up valuable space. It's a shame, but we don't have a shop to go to anywhere nearby. Uh, Brelix took a bit of a noshing there, and I don't want him to feel too weak, so there you go. Just no. No, those guys hit hard and fast. Is this the start of a schedule? No, come on, Marvin, you know me better than that. Some locked door. Yeah, I get that, but where is the switch? It's somewhere in the bottom left. We checked all of these. Can't get down into there. Walking against the walls just to see if it's one of those. Uh, these guys have a lot of shielding on them, so let's just skedaddle. Skedaddle there, Rusty. You don't have the armor for that. Step all over the snake. <laughs> oh, ooh, there we go. Instinct paid off. Yeah, my instinct says, around gobbos, watch yourself. I say it all the time, but for real, the day of schedule is coming.
This is a bit dangerous, but I feel the sunk cost fallacy. Does that mean RimWorld is coming? RimWorld kind of kills the schedule in its own way. Come on, Brelix. Show us what you're made of. God, we're finding out what Rusty is made of inside and out. This was a bad fight to take. But I could not resist it and I still can't. There we go. Whew, that's a lot of experience for our troubles at least. Now where is that? Uh, where's the lock? Can't risk any fight that isn't a cakewalk for us. It means Rimworld, Factorio, and Patrician 4. If by Patrician 4 you mean Port Royal 4, then yes, and good lord, keep dancing there, Rusty. That uh, was no easy one. There we go. A door has opened, and I strongly suspect it's a door in the middle. Nope, nope, nope. Not against those things. I think they're slow, so Rusty should be able to. Should be able to get away. Whew. I feel bad for the Rusty. We'll uh, use our last sliver of heal on the Rust. Alright, never do anything right. I will never forget that riddle. Never do anything right. Somewhere lock, click, something, something. about you, but let's take you on. Whew. Ooh, Rusty! You got yourself a silver helmet out of all of that. You're already a helmet man, but this is a probably even better helmet. Looks good, and I think Brelix can join the Helmet Brigade because it's probably only good for thieves and warriors, right? Oh, magicians can. Blades, I think it's high time that you got a bit of protection on you so that we can further differentiate you from the lesser mage. Where'd that other red staff go? Ah, you've got it. I don't know if you can give it to Sid, who's busy being dead, but whatever the case, Blades, put on your awesome helmet. Damn, that's, that's some swole going on there. Let's not get too cocky here. Just because we get to level 5 doesn't mean we're actually able to, uh, to find the mad monks of level 5 slaughter this thing though, right? Right. Oh, Brelics. <laughs> Brelics is awarded with another death dagger. That's amazing. Alright, onwards to level 5. I can see why Jake liked Draken now from this. It's pretty much the same in a lot of aspects. Do you mean terrible? There's a lot of terrible going on. Welcome to Haven. Winterhaven? Millhaven? Now, it might be all well and good here, but... Um, yeah, the enemies are tougher and we still have to find our way out of here. I will feel so much better when we encounter the Mad Monks. Can I dual wield death daggers? I wish you could, but you cannot. Uh oh, that's our mage you're chipping away at. That helmet's not helping him out too much. 
Come on, Rusty. Drag Sid's corpse away with the... Oh, maybe this is a scripted encounter. Well, I don't want any of these. Oh. Should have taken the two blue guys. This is a scripted encounter. Let's just take on the Zombambos. There we go. Now. Beware the endless corridors. Oh, I do. But where is the healing? After sensing victory, walk straight. Walls must be no barrier. Oh god. Is Jake rushing blindly too far ahead in a dungeon crawler again? I mean, we could backtrack quite far for healing, but we're on the floor that has healing. Ucha. That's a bit of a bummer. Can I even run from these things? Yeah, I can. Okay. Blades, keep it together. I didn't throw a helmet at you for nothing. Silver sword for blades. Rusty, could you get an even better sword now? Let's have a look at it. Can anyone remember the stats on the great sword? I don't think it was 2012. I certainly don't think it was 2012. So not only do you get a silver helmet, you get a silver sword to go with it. Rusty's doing all right, but our lack of health is danger, danger. get the armor class out of it, so uh, let's hold on to what we have for now in case we find a store. Ha Haven hides in all directions. Passwall is written here. Great. Also great. Oh, thank God for that. And with this, we can actually heal up. Doesn't save Sid, but nothing ever could. But Passwall is needed to beat the game, as far as I'm aware. If the helmet and sword are the right shape, he could become Paul Narif. I know exactly what you mean, I just... Still gutted he got to survive and you know who did not. Alright, this is good, but it's not the be-all and end-all. We still need to find the Mad Monks. Come on, get Death Daggering Brelix, this is what it's all about. So here we have somewhere that we can't get into, no hidden doors on it or anything, but with Blade's new ability, Passwall, chunk, in we go. And we find 400 gold for our troubles. Honestly, I don't think that was worth the spending two magic points to get in and out of it. But spend, we did. And I may have to do it here as well it's imperative that we find the Mad Monks. A glow cloak! Well, Blades, it's your lucky day. I don't know, you're trapped in this game, it can't be anyone's lucky day. 
but glow cloak is no doubt better than leather. I don't even need to look at it, but I will. Armor class 6, magicians only, that's phenomenal. So who could have imagined that blades would end up with the highest armor class out of everybody? Not me. I do know, however, that this is getting ditched, so we at least keep space for items. Okay, like I said, all fantastic news, but this MP will not last forever. The magic fountain is now dry, and we are still no wiser about the location of the mad monks. So let's pass wall our way here, and try to explore elsewhere for them. Oh, there was a door right there, go figure. Although with all this armor and all these sweet weapons, the enemies here are slightly less threatening. They still pack a wallop though. Are we still drag and sit around? I can see them severely underleveled for gr uh, later fights. Fortunately, when you level up, it levels up the whole party, dead or alive. You have uh, shared level, not individual levels. Death Daggering. If you see someone with loads of health just drop dead, it's probably Brelix just doing what Brelix does, which is killing in one hit with Death Dagger. Seven turns and the sword will appear. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, if it's not that, then I don't know what is. Come on, Blades, let's keep passing through walls until we find those mad monks. healing on Brelix unless it's going to be fully put to use, but having Brelix die would be one of the scariest things. The scariest things. And to the point where let's do a round of healing here. Nice to have a decent spell book by now. But uh, between the aggressive spells, I don't know what the difference uh, between them is. I still see them as a massive waste of magic. Also, how are we doing in terms of EXP? Uh, I don't know what it takes to the next level. Hopefully we're close. Definitely encircling something interesting here, and I'm hoping it's the monks and the store, because they're quite close together on floor 5. And then I can sell all the stuff that is still awesome, but has been outstripped in usefulness. There's no point in keeping hold of something that uh, you have the better of anyway. Okay, so there we go. There is something in here. Blades. We're very low on magic, but please tell me what is in here. An armory, eh? That sounds good to me. Rusty, we got stuff. What? Okay. What the hell was that? Okay. Still, let's get rid of the crap that we don't need. Like greatsword. 
That was pretty spooky. That was very spooky. I maybe accidentally leaned on turbo, except my keyboard is about one foot away from my hand, so... No. Keeping all that red staff for now, but the shield can go. I wonder if dead Sid can sell something like that jewel. Yeah, there we go. Shield, again, not needed. And I can sell one of those red staffs because I have two. And Death Dagger, we already have one. Sadly, you can't tape them together like your Final Fantasy IX Zidane. So away it goes. Oh, for good money as well. What can we buy, though? We have a lot of dosh. I obviously don't want these crummy weapons. I'm more interested in the likes of Scale and Helmet. I'm very interested in Scale, actually. And Helmet, actually. I'll get both. I don't think I have Helmet for Relics, do I? There we go. Let's get these equipped. No, not attributes. We know those rock. What's better? Scale or chain? Let's take a quick look at scale. Oh yeah, scale is so much better. Uh, wait, what? Well, mistakes were made. Chain is better. This is not Monster Hunter. Alright, before we do much else, let's get Sid back among the living. Welcome to the Mad Monks. Oh. Isn't that so much better? And now I'm actually wondering if Sid did level up with the rest of us, because he looks a bit pathetic. Still, we'll help him out, because that's how nice we are. I'm going to toss that red staff over to him. And not discard it. And a helmet for you as well. And at least with this, your armor class won't be such a joke. I mean, everything's relative, but it doesn't look that bad. What else do we have in this magic square? I'm far less scared of anything we run into now, not just because we're tooled to the hilt, but... I don't have to worry about somebody immediately dying because we can just leg it. Beware, zoom tube inside. Yes, I do beware that. Let's not go next to it. In fact, we stay far, far away. Yeah, we got him. I don't even mind the damage we take. I think in the center here, there's a stairway up. Yeah, let's not do that for now. Yeah, not even scared of four bats. Not when the monks are there to heal us all up. What floor are we on now, asks Dark Young. This is the mastery of floor 5 out of 15. 
Of course the game just gets worse and worse from here on out, but at least we got this far. And yes, 1, 5, and 10 are the good ones, because there you can heal up entirely, even resurrect, for free. <laughs> it can get worse. Can't it just... I don't think we've even met the guy who uh, threatens us to bring him the black crystal. Okay, I'm sure you're all wondering what's in this square, so let's get blades to figure that out. Whilst showing off how much more... Uh-oh. Well, mistakes are made. Let's just slug it out against them. Uh, Blades and Sid are both a bit naff right now. More than a bit. Alright, Blades. First order of beeswax. Let's get ourselves some shielding. Sid, let's get ourselves some strength. Oh wait, I have to cast it on a person? Alright, Rusty, there you go. I think the return is a bit better to do it on Rusty, since Rusty can uh, just generally hit hard. Relics will kill. Well, I can't say I'm that surprised, but Sid is dead again. Let's have Blades heal themselves up. And then, I suppose, heal up the rust. As soon as I start killing them, it'll start snowballing in my direction. But losing Sid, and I'm begrudged to say this, but it was a bit of a hit. Uh, let's have some death misting going on. Oh, that did nothing. Alright, one down, seven to go. Yeah, it's two down, great. Starts going in my direction now. Let's just make sure that Blades is still alive, and then we'll catch up on healing Rusty. Excellent numbers are starting to even out a whole lot more. Let's not lose blades here while we're at it though. Blades has been carrying uh, this run whilst Brelix has been killing it. Rusty's been old reliable and Sid's been Sid. Alright, let's ball to the wallet. Expertly done. Although why we did that, I just don't know. If I go back in there again, are they there again? Perhaps that's something to be figured out after we pay a visit to the Mad Monks. Every run needs a dead weight, and Sid is this run's. Bit harsh, that. Just a bit. Doesn't make it less true, but harsh. Alright, are they still there? Okay, good. So, let's say I used my last piece of magic to enter this area. I'm now stuck here. The only way out is by using Pass Wall. So if we didn't have any magic left, we'd have to last resort, which is where we null, we all neck ourselves. That's pretty grim. Alright, next up... is floor six. But that is 
definitely where we call it for tonight. So what you, we would do is save this game, and then you have to put, you have to actually write down these codes. I had little notebooks full of these, and these store your character's name and stats. The interesting thing is that this part holds the party experience. So if you just uh, got yourself a game code from the moment you start the game, and then kept the character's code from here. You could reset them to level 1, but they keep their stats, so you could just keep leveling them up and have super-powered party members. But I'm not the kind to just exploit a game like that. No, I will use the wonders of modern technology and just save state that one. Uh, and then, uh, then the thing is not responding. That fills me with just a little bit of worry. Okay, there we go. Yep, I've uh, modded my genuine NES to allow for save stating, if you're willing to believe that. Okay, I'm gonna call it there. I don't know if we're gonna have more swords and serpents down the line. I guess if there's a crying desire for it, it could happen, but the game is pretty awful. I never beat it as a kid, and I'm not dying to complete it now, I just felt an urge to play it for this evening. So, that's our lot, it's time to head off to bed, so cheers for joining, and until our next stream, it's a cheerio.